Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to take my glasses off because my heart rate's over 90 plus, if not 100, 102. And I can't slow it down. So I don't need to be looking at anything. It'll be like a headache. So let's rest the eyes. Dr. Ron has to do his own work. I met with the oncologist today, or yesterday, because <laughs> now today's the 24th, and I have a new condition called thrombocytopenia. So I'm no longer neutropenia, which is the white blood count. So now my white blood count went up. It's safe to be around people and talk to them and strangers and being outside. So, but I can't, uh, I have shortness of breath. But I have a full lung. It's not about. Well, I'm getting oxygen through um, an elevated um, heart rate, and I'm. Uh, I got to put the cat down. He wants loving at two, three in the morning, and I don't get to give it to him. So um, I. Uh, I know how to lower my heart rate. So I told him again, 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 and again. Like I've told him before, the doctor, that a beta blocker will knock me out. You know, you have alpha, beta, delta, uh, de alpha, beta, theta, delta, you know, the waves, however they're scheduled. And when you knock out a beta blocker, it knocks out the connection from the synapses of the mind, which it should be your unconscious mind. Um, subconscious, unconscious, subconscious, where it's a function that's not something you do yourself. Your body function does it. It's chemical, but it's also through your, your electrical system. So my electrical system, which is my nervous system, is connected to my brain. And my brain is connected to my heart. Like my backbone, I could do the rib bone, you know, that sort of thing have to learn these things. And uh, I know from past history that the um, beta blocker will slow my heart rate down immediately. It's a, it's a cardiac drug. It's considered a placebo for those who have a healthy heart because it doesn't do anything for them. So they, they use it as a placebo. It's a very common knowledge. Um, but obviously not to my doctor. Because he wrote everything I took down. I was not too aggressive, but I was very much the self-advocate that this is my request. And if you want to know why I'm requesting them, it's for my pleasure. Yeah, PRN. It would be as needed. So I would reach for um, something as I'm being struck by something. It isn't difficult to have your own medicine chest, your own medicine cabinet to reach for those things that you might have used in the past that might be left over and you should throw those drugs out, but sometimes you reach for them. Everybody does. So I have a history of using the drug and it helped and I didn't stay on it. It was just as needed. I took it once, twice, it worked. I got back on track. Now, as far as my thrombocytopenia, that means I have no platelets. That's why I was hemorrhaging in the sinus area. And I told him about the sinus area, but he dismissed it. And in the end, you, he tells me I have thrombocytopenia and that I cannot take the infusion and I can't get hydrated because I'm holding a little water. But it turns out they're low on saline because it's all being shipped to the North Carolinas, which is good. But what's bad is that the company that manufactures the saline is actually in North Carolina and got devastated. So the product's going back home where it belonged or where it was created to help. So I don't know, that's kind of suspicious. But I didn't need sailing today or yesterday. So I made the request, affirming the request, and also to get a albuterol inhaler recharged. Now he looks at me and he goes, I don't know what recharge means. I said it means to refill it. Well, I don't understand that word. 
me out to make a refill on my medication. So I go to the pharmacy tonight, and the two drugs that I requested, and I've been requesting the albuterol for two or three times now, so it's been over a month. They're not there. So he's not listening to the patient, and he could give a shit less of what I want. As far as my needs, he can take care of that. I'm on his regimen of chemo and immunotherapy. But he's holding me back because I have no platelets. Well, one of the conditioning factors of taking chemo is that it knocks out or attacks your platelet count. And so you lose your platelet count. Okay. If I put any more in me, like say you go to the plasma center and you see that those people are pumping out plasma every day, selling it, selling it, selling it, selling it to tell it. Well, where's all that plasma going? Well, that plasma-based product has platelets in it. It's very simple to uh, hook me up and give me a bag of, of a little bag of plasma, giving me platelets, uh, platelets that would then adhere to me, that um, would prevent bleeding, internal bleeding, and uh, ultimately anemia if you're not careful. Because what happens is internally you start digesting blood. And I told him that I had noted some granulation in my stool. And this doctor looks at me. And he says, what does granulation mean? Oh, my God. I said, you don't know what that means? I said, granulation, like coffee grounds. I said, my stools look like coffee grounds. Now, objectively, you would wonder, what in the hell? Did the guy swallow coffee grounds? No, he's digesting blood. Now, it's not fresh blood. It's not blood. It's digested blood. So it looks like coffee grounds. And uh, that's just the way it is. If you're a CNA, if you've ever been a nurse, you've seen it. If you don't know what it is, no one informed you. Obviously. So it's not a GI tract bleeding. No, it's my sinuses. So I've got that under control. There's no, it's very pink when I, a little, just barely a pink when I blow my nose, where before it was like a big black butterfly full of um, clots. So that went on for a week, you know, four days, five days. I say a week, four or five days is a week to a doctor. So I thought to myself, he has got a hell of a fucking lot of nerve. When I'm making requests as a dying man, or stuff that I know works for me. So now I've got um, you know, palliative care under my my wing. And uh, I called them as soon as I got home. Two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon. Because they're available eight to five. And no one calls me back. So I guess it's going to be a morning thing. She thinks there's no emergency. Well, here I'm up every night, past 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, every night. And I can hear my heartbeat in my ears. And as I move from room to room, I'm weak and I'm ready to pass out. Because my heart rate won't go down. Now my synapses is keeping my heart rate. Boom, 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 Well, you can't do that to your heart 24-7. It's going to, it's going to finally burn out. I have a very strong heart, so it's my mind. It's my mind. It's my nervous system. It's my mind. Why is it so difficult to understand that I am an emotional, mindful, wonderful person? That's how I put it to him. And he's blank. He's completely blank. So I ask questions about him in the clinic. He's 60 years old. He's, um, of course, devotedly married because he's Hispanic. But he comes from Mexico City. There's the difference right there. He's a socialist. He's a socialist. He's following an agenda. He's not going to give me what I want. Now, do I drop him? I love him. I trust him enough not to harm me. 
even if he finds out I'm a conservative, he shouldn't be involved politically. He should be focused on his career. And he's acting as a hematologist rather than an oncologist. And he has no background to cardiac or the nervous system, neurology. He has no contact. He has no basis for it. I need an internal medicine doctor. I do. I need someone that can go across the board, across the spectrum, in the physiology of the human makeup, which is a spiritual thing. Spiritual is nerve, <laughs> as it is emotion. It is emotion for me, so it's a nervous system. And I would like to calm down. So I called the answering service at three o'clock in the morning and the guy's real nice. And I said, you know, I hate to wake you up, but this is so important. I asked a made request for a uh, medication to be sent to the pharmacy. He made a list of what I was requesting. And when I got to the pharmacy, it's not there. I said, how terrible it needs to be there tomorrow. So I gave him the drug names. Uh, and which is just the albuterol and a beta blocker and um, my phone number and ID and all that stuff so that he can verify who I am. But he should get that message first thing in the morning and see that I'm up at 3 a.m. making this discovery. And I didn't make the discovery at 3 a.m. It's just that I'm in so much distress. He needs to hear me and hear me every single minute of every single day until he wakes up and says, Okay, here's your stupid placebo. And then I go to bed and I rest. And I wake up and I have a 60 plus heart rate. Normal. Not in the hundreds. And I'm functioning and I can hear properly because I'm not listening to my drumming heart. Trying to keep up with my respirations and in my heart rate. You can see that when I sit, I can talk and I'm relaxed so I can lower my heart, my respiration, but that doesn't mean my heart's lowering. It just means that I can finally breathe because I stop hyperventilating. Hyperventilating is part of the, the worst part of this experience. So tomorrow I look forward to talking to um, palliative care and I want to connect with their doctor right away and if not, then I'm going to start making some phone calls for some another doctor or something and find out if they, they can circumvent this bullshit, this agenda to harm people because they can't see beyond the box. They were trained to be this way. Now untrain yourself and retrain yourself into the modality. He lied to me, to my face. And he goes, no, we've been using Zepzelka for years and years and years. I said, four years, COVID years, cover-up years. See how I use my voice and words? It scares them. They're like, oh, 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 he knows. He knows. Don't give him what he wants. I'm not being paranoid. I'm not. It's a wicked generation. It is a wicked generation. Truly. And all this focus on, you know, who's who, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. And all this focus on Obama and his fake marriage and his gay lifestyle and P. Diddy and all the tapes. And now Eminem coming forward, endorsing Kamala because he's a big old smear queer. Smear the queer. It's just a terrible thing. And yet we have to speak about it. But look at who's suffering. Look at look at who's being harmed. I have a full life ahead of me. I want to live. I have so much built inside of me that needs to be shared. I'm sorry. I'm drooling a little bit. I can't feel my lip. I don't know if I can feel it dripping up. Yeah. It's very terrible. Bit my lip twice today. Really bad. Oh, crunch. And it's not like I can feel it. I just I feel it. 
branch with no paint because it's numb. So it's like, ugh, these sharp teeth just did it in. So, ugh, it's terrible. So the only thing I can do is exhaust myself. So I'm sitting up. I'm not going to... I looked up everything that could naturally help cytothrombocytopenia, low platelet, and milk, and meats. It's, uh, the zombie milk and meat. So uh, milks uh, will help. And um, I just had a glass of milk. And I don't want to take in any munchies because I'm really not hungry. And I'm not uh, nervous in the stomach. I'm not disrupted in the stomach. It's um, So he did give me my anti-coughing medication back because it's addictive. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a local uh, uh, anesthesia. So I took one, I'm going to take one now. Um, I can cough. I don't have a cough. But I did cough up some, I did cough up some particles and bloody, you know, old blood stuff. But if I do cough, then I should open a vesicle. A vessel, vesicle. If he doesn't understand those words, maybe he should look those up too in my lung, and which could cause some bruising to bleeding. And then, of course, ultimately, if I can't stop the bleeding because of no platelets, I would bleed in the lung and I would fill with fluids, which my ankles are swollen tonight. So I'm filling with fluids by sitting up and I should have my legs up. But it's the heart. So he's not a cardiologist. He doesn't understand that my heart is my emotion base and that the cancer is affecting my uh, nerve system. But that should be that should that should be countered. Um, not it's not like we're trying to conquer anything but the cancer. So now I don't have the cancer treatment. Now he's cut me off. We're not going to give you your your infusion today. Maybe as an excuse for not using saline because of the plant that was just taken out in North Carolina and they're shipping all the saline back and there's a shortage. But I'm being cut off from the cancer that's going to the treatment that's killing the cancer, which was the reason reason why it one of the results is the the low platelet count. Well, if I put platelets in me, like the you know they do the donations, the cancer treatment will just attack the new platelets, and the patient will go through all this rigmarole as it goes through that process, which is what I just did, which is why I don't have platelets. So let's continue the treatment. Let the cancer treatment go after the cancer and not the platelets, not me. See, I think we did split the compound. I think that reality is striking from what I'm telling them, and they better put the brakes on, because that first session, which was together as Zell Zell, Separate cell count is now two different compounds working. One increases toxicity. It's the other one attacking the platelets. Well, accordingly, yes, it's doing its job. Can you see that? Am I talking too low? It's late. People do that. It's like the quietness of the world makes a person quiet. And I don't have to be. I'm on the other side of the house, just completely on the other side of the house. Cannot hear me at all. Can't see any lights. Doesn't know what I'm doing. I could be on the floor and crying. It's not going to happen. But, um, yeah, I hope to have good news today. <laughs> this morning by talking to uh, palliative care. Uh, they have their own doctor. I need to find out what kind of doctor. Meet with him, talk to him help him understand what my position is and I just need some sleep and uh, yeah, knock me out obviously. so he did give me Oxycontin for pain now that's good, pain management and that would be PRM if I ever go into a fit load like I did last night I would definitely consider Oxycontin 
although I consider it a dangerous, very addictive drug and well, well abused in this world. So um, I don't. I don't like it. So I will use it. And uh, as needed for pain. So it's not going to be touched. I'm not in pain right now. I have a slight um, pressure in my head, behind my eyes, things like that. I can hear my heart, feel my heart, my body shaking. I'm weak. I have a cane. I bought a cane. And it's green. It's kind of like little green modeling. But it's just a cane. And it has health. I'm right-sided strength. So I'm a, I'm a right-handed person, but I realize how strong I am versus my left to my right. I'm from the left, but I have no strength to the left. The right side is what carries me, so everything gets used with the cane on the right side. So it fit perfectly. I said, I tried it at Walgreens, and I said, okay, let's go. Go with that, because, um, go again. Little drooler. Drooler, drooler. Yeah. Mm. And I do look forward to a dentist. I really do. Even though it's not going to cure the, the, the numbness, they'll take care of the toothache. Whether they pull the molar or not or whatever. But like I told them, I said, right now, even that would have to be put on hold because I have no platelets. Yeah, see? See the dilemma? Is it purposeful? Do they know this? Yes. So what's the problem? Why Why can't I, I, how come I can put it together? But they can't put it together. What happened to us? What happened to the world of common sense? And what happened to the world of uh, being made self-evident? Yeah, self-evident is the evidence that I've accumulated, that I see, that I hear, that validate my thoughts and my well-being. It doesn't make any sense. What happened? And to look at such peoples who are running the world or who are in charge, who think they have a false sense of authority over another human being, when a request is made, gives me a friggin' narcotic. Like on the street, it probably makes some money. That I'm only going to PRN use as needed. That's a narcotic, that's a controlled substance. A beta blocker's nothing. What? He said you could die. There we go again. I'm very confused by that. We went over it at the pharmacy. They've got to remove that from their statements. Human spontaneous death is bullshit. It's human spontaneous end-of-life symptoms caused by drugs administered by doctors. It's the chemo. That'll kill you. It's on their pamphlet. Good Lord. And they, they, they could grasp everything I said about the dietary portion. Wow. But they don't think they can make any changes. So I said, then I want to do a write-up. I want to sign an incident report. You can go to administration and then you can just leave it at that. You can always have an incident report looked up. You don't throw them away. You cannot throw them away. But you can dismiss the patient and not ever say anything. Well, he didn't give me my albuterol, right? And he was wondering who prescribed uh, morphine to me. Well, that was my previous PCP. And the morphine had a refill, and I refilled it. And I used it as needed for pain. And I even used it this past time before, for which I re I used it up over a six to eight month period of time. And uh, he, he says, I don't have that on my record. So what do you mean? He says, I don't show anybody ever giving you morphine in my record. He doesn't have my previous PCPs records, medications listed 
which means my family practice, which is connected to his computer, because that's how I set it up. They're connected, same facility. He doesn't have her records. She never sent her records, my records, to them. No, it was a new diagnosis, so she took all her old diagnosis and nothing that pertained to that, so she didn't send it, even though my request was all records. Now, did the PCP fail, my new PCP fail to request, make to, to send the request through? I wrote it all out. I'm not the secretary. As much as I should be paid for all the work I do to keep this going. It would seem. Good Lord. But I would like to work at an answering service. That sounded so casual tonight. Oh, this is wrong. What's the message? He's an asshole. Okay, I'll leave him a message. Thank you. Click. That would be an easy job. So today's the 24th. It has the six connotation, you know, the fertility, growth, expansion outward. But it's the end time spirit upon such a thing. And so there's an expansion of things that are not so pretty, but are held by men, not man. Men who claim to be man, but where's the humanitarian? Well, it doesn't really show up, does it? Not until next year. We can't find the true humanitarian in this world, whether it be an avatar, whether it be um, a true friend. We can't expect that to step up until the spirit steps up. And in this end time spirit, the 10 to the 8 to the 9, creating that end time spirit upon the day, next year is 2025, which equates to the 9. So that's the spirit. That's the true spirit of it all. For the whole year, universally, worldwide. Yeah. Where each of us have our own day in our own way here through the end time spirit of that 10, 8, 9 expression. Yeah, truly. So upon the end time spirit of the six, we're not going to find the man. We're only going to find men. And the debauchery of such a thing, the fertility of such a thing, the growth of such a thing, all these things can be represented through the six, but it's through relationship. The six has al always been the, the power of a relationship. And so you look upon who's who, and who's rubbing who, and who's hiding who, and who, 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 the woo, woo, my doctor, that he can't understand the simple word is recharging my albuterol. Well, recharge it, honey, on your fucking credit card, however you want to interpret it. It has several meanings, and you're not from the from America. You're not from the United States. Yeah, you're from the Americas, North America, but you're from Mexico City, and so you're elitist. You're a caste society uh, mentality socialist. Why? Because that's what Mexico City is. Yeah. So how does he see me? Well, he's darker complexed than I am. Is this a vendetta? Is this a vendetta from a man named Gomez? Which means man. And yet you shall not find a man. The man shall not appear. The avatar cannot show himself. Not in this reality, not in the eight of time, which is truly perdition. It's spoken of that way, that of the six, which goes in, which is also of the seven, becomes the eight. It's he who goes into perdition. Now, that's an individual, and I believe that's Obama. Yeah, it's his placement of the king, being the sixth king, and then coming back, trying to, through an administration. Do you see that? Yeah, like the underhandedness of something. Now, it did, today doesn't have to do with hand, so don't get confused by what I'm speaking beyond numerology. Now, the six is, uh, six can have a lot to do with money. 
does is it expands its its proportion to the three when the three three can create that investment but it's money as it grew, its growth so it may not be an investment to make growth as much as a uh, a wheel and a deal kind of looks like a little wheel with a handle yeah but it's outward it's forward it's not upward and there's a big difference so a lot of people are expecting the rapture by the end of 24th. Well, that's movement upward, isn't it? No, and as a number six on the end time spirit expression, no, it, it would be extension forward. And I want to move forward with the man, Gomez. I told him that. I said, I know I'm aggressive and confusing and I'm high strung. And my science is not your science. But my requests are valid based on my needs and my wants, not yours. Now that I'm signed up to Paltic, and then he tried to push it all on Paltic, let them just, just prescribe, you know, because it pertains to my health. And I'm under your regimen. As long as I'm taking your drug and using your, your uh, protocol to get through it, then... Uh, in hopes that you're respecting my request to help me, then palliative sits back and waits and, and helps. They'll help with my oxygen. They'll help with any um, um, durable medical equipment, which they could have provided me a cane for free. But instead, I'm going to use that Medicaid money to support all that extra over-the-counter bullshit that I have to deal with. Which I haven't. I haven't left the house. So Jeffrey, I give him the card. He knows the PIN number. And he takes my ID card when he goes to the pharmacy. And they have no problem as long as he presents my ID. He can pick up whatever he needs to. So, um, but tonight, since I was feeling a little bit better tonight, I went to the pharmacy with him and then I saw the cane and it was green. He said, that's my color. And it was only $20. Or a cane that's adjustable and durable and and it has helped it has helped it's nice not it's nice to have that it's the furniture to hold on to when you're walking through the house <laughs> you need to reach that last piece of furniture and then you have to go the distance yeah well that's when the cane steps in <laughs> that sounds biblical doesn't it sounds kind of weird so anyway, so God bless you all for sending prayers. And no one told me yet who the coffee person is. But yeah, definitely that turkey tail is a good thing. Now, I can't take coffee right now. Oh, no, no. That would be the, that would be the thing that sends me over the roof. It might have been the trigger, you know, that caused me to go into such a, um, a fit. But you no, know, that was going on. It's the chemo drug. Yeah, it is. So my toothache is starting to flare up because of the lactose of the milk, I guess. I didn't take anything else. Oh, I did have an insure. They sent me home with some insure. Here, have some insure. Oh, thank you. I have some insure. You'll get better. Insure. The insure. <laughs> That's crazy. They can't hear and they can't see. But it's running through everything the living word wants to speak. The living word wants to reveal everything. And, and most people are, are blinded by Paul. They accepted someone else instead of the Lord. They're not hearing his voice. They play geometria games, parlor games. They try to pull up Barack Hussein Obama as being, you know, the vile king of Daniel 20, 11, 20, 21, 21. But see, that all took place, that whole portion of our um, our development within spirit, in the body, the soul body. And then, of course, some of the readers that just go right to Thessalonians without realizing they're listening to a Pharisee who usurped the word and intentionally uh, made it profitable to sell God in the temple when our Lord had turned over the money changers. Real and making us realize it's the temple, the body. 
has nothing to do with the religion or the legion or any of that. And that within this structure is of God. So you're in the temple of God. And as I have to sit now instead of walk around, I'm always sitting in the temple of God. And I'm, I'm declaring myself of God. You see what Paul did? And I'm, t I'm showing you that I'm of God. Yeah. And I'm restoring it. And it's ironic. Ironic. I'm irony. Yes. It's uh, irony from my childhood. It's ironic that uh, I'm the third temple of my father's creation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the benefactor of the third temple. That's my body. And it's changing. And I think you realize that. But what else isn't changing out there is the socialist liberal agenda. And we're right in front of a very, very, very important election that is rigged. And all those tapes will be revealed. Oh. And I guess with my doctor, it'll be tape. Well, that's how you say it in Spanish, T-A-P-E, tape. Tape, give me some tape. Let me tape it up. It's slang, he wouldn't understand what I'm saying. It's a joke. English to Spanish joke, you know. It's like picoles. Can I have some picoles? Well, there's no picoles. Pickles, man. Picoles. There's so much disruption. There's so much disruption. And it's not within me. It's outside of us, isn't it? And, the, and, and we held on to. We held on to those things that we were taught. And that's the problem with these people. They were too. Mm -hmm. And they lied from the beginning to get into the position so they can speak their truth. You know that, don't you? Yeah, it's true. And so we're dealing it on a spectrum. It's a sickness. And it harms people. It harms life. It harms livelihoods. It harms the fabric of our nation. I hope she's, I hope you can. I hope you can grasp that. Truly, because the nation is Jerusalem as it is Israel. As we start to awaken, yeah, the truth. If we can get through to Judah somehow, peacefully, into Judah's arms. And have them embrace who they truly are, uh, wholeheartedly, the whole nation of Judah, so that the whole nation of Israel can support them back into their into their restoration. Yeah, and it isn't that P. Diddy crap. No, it isn't Usher. Oh no, 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 honey, it isn't Beyonce's. No, it's none of that. It's worthy. It's truly worthy. And it's hidden in the music. It is. You know, because it's an old song. Sung if it were new. And none could other, no one could sing that song. Except for 144,000. In the sense of God. I believe that. So in numerology, it um, it should be a productive day as far as the six. It'll be productive for my doctor, I'm sure. It'll be productive for me to find more information and uh, pull some more strings and bells or whatever's ringing and whatever things that need to be done to make people realize that there's a danger at foot. My request is nothing. I talked to the pharmacist directly about the bailout. She laughed. She thought it was incredibly silly. But she said, don't worry, we won't hold back Tesla pills from you. And that's not what I was requesting. I mean, I had requested them in the past, not understanding until they told me they're addictive. So I let it go and I didn't need them. 
Although right now I'm going to use it. Because the last thing I want to do is cough up blood and not stop the bleeding. I mean, it's one thing to have it in your sinuses and blow it out. Every day, throughout the day, until finally you get the bleeding to stop and not digest it. Which he didn't understand what granulation means. Isn't that odd? Please leave a message in the comment. What do you think about that? It's bizarre behavior. And of course, unfortunately, I'm one of those people that never has a chaperone with me. So they, they never get to hear what I hear. But do they hear what I hear? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, talk to you later. Have a great day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back on. Because I'll be busy and trying to sleep all day. Rest. It's got to get my feet up. I only have slight edema to my two little toes. <laughs> and weird. Just the two little toes. And on the top of the lid, there's some water. My ankles look fine. My legs feel tight. So there's a little in the legs. But it went through an, uh, what I call attack. is not... <laughs> It's the chemo, but it's my body doing what it needs to do. So no, I'm no longer neutropenia. So that, that's that been lifted, and thank you. Thank you so much for any prayers against that. That's the low white blood count. That's when I'm my immune system crashed. And that I have to be careful. I could go pneumonia and a hospitalization, a trachea, oh, blah, to kill a patient off it was better to isolate and not let anybody in the house. Although Jeff brought the cat from outside in, but I wouldn't touch her yet. But I did today, because now my count's up. So I got to walk outside and breathe water's air. <laughs> water's air. <laughs> Mexico, <laughs> your air filling our valley with your putrid burnings of cardboard daily formaldehyde, whatever the works. So anyways, um, but I got to pet the cat, give her some loving. But then when I came in earlier, later, I had a flea jump on me in my room. A real honest to goodness flea. I haven't seen one in years. Not really years. Several seasons ago, there was a cat that was injured and his wounds attracted the Flea, you know, because fleas are attracted to blood. They want blood products. So I <laughs> got news for Mr. Flea. Come suck on me. <laughs> so we, Jeff and I talked about it, and we haven't seen any other signs. So it could have just been a little flea that came in with the cat. And then, of course, we got our cats, and we don't want one flea making 10 billion in a day. But they can all kind of migrate to my bathroom and die because I'm so toxic from chemotherapy. This is where I've been staying, so he might not last very long, but we'll, we'll address that. We don't want fleas. No, especially with these hardwood floors. They're so creaky and split that the fleas will just live there by the hundreds of thousands, and we have to have the whole house treated. Yeah, that'll be the next big, big hurdle, you know, a big plague of the century, the flea. Of all things, we've been so dry here, and we're so alkali. Makes no sense. But fleas and cats are synonymous. Not so much dogs, but dogs get the fleas from the cats. Now it's kind of just a bi-dog racial flea-cat business. And they lower the standards, and they, um, the insects become stronger and stronger and stronger. Those wicked people out there, those liberals, the Marxists, the ones who are crying out for democracy when she's the harlot. Yeah, we are a republic, is the thing. And it's not activated. Scroll, they're not worthy to open it. But we need to see that happen because the white horseman is riding. And so we know that in heaven it's broken. Now we need to get it. We need to get it here, and they're here. The players are here. Maybe the expression is just holding back in time. Tradition. We're just caught in this loop for time. 
end time spirit. Next month, we're going to have the 11 present itself with great fire and, and partnership, a great fire and equality, a great fire and a reflection, a great fire and center stage, a great fire and angel messages. What more can you put on the 11? Electricity, the elect, <laughs> the new sons of God, the two witnesses. It says one son. Both, Ben David and Ben Yosef, appear as one. The bright and the morning is appearing as one. And yet they're two. And when two become one, what shall you do? That's from the book of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas. So, fun ramblings, huh? The eleven upon time. So it's fire and time. So it says fire and time. On the center stage. In front of everybody. And these celebrities. They're just airing it out, telling us who they are. Revealing their truth, revealing their agendas. In the guise of democracy. As if that's the freedom. That's their freedom. That's their liberty. And they used up their oil. Yeah. There's a difference from one hand to the other. So, and upon them each day. So we're going to take that 11 and that 8. And we're going to create the 10. And there's the truest thief right there on the stage. Who? The one who's going to take it all back. The one who's going to correct it all is he's on a horse, a white horse, called Righteous and True. And if we recognize that, we can embrace it, give him his crown, which I believe he took and did not fall down, and his bow, which is Bowman, because Vance's birth name is Bowman. And he goes out to conquer and to conquer. Yeah, for restoration. And those people, those that were involved, well, the fire upon time, firing time, creates that thief. But that thief is more than just a thief, isn't it? It's a child with a zero. An unknowable child would be a man-child. And isn't he? He has real estate deals and all his Margo, Margo, Margo. And his beautiful, beautiful wives, his beautiful, beautiful children. Yeah. Well, not Jared. <laughs> hey, Vanga, she didn't she so well. But the, for what a purpose that is, and 666 building, and that whole display of it, and that soul just, I don't know how he feels about his father in law now. Now that they're conducting genocide in Israel, and he's a dual citizen, and he's one of Netanyahu's little love children. Yeah, his little connection, child, love child. Well, that's not the man child. Trump's the man child. I used to always call Robbie Yanson the man child, because I wanted him to fulfill in heaven. And I believe in heaven he would be, because he's just as much of a dynamo. As Trump is. That's a good word. If my Dr. Gomez doesn't understand what a dynamo is, I'm so sorry. He doesn't know what granulation means. He doesn't know how to charge something up. Needs some extra, extra, extra. What's he do when he talks to someone with slang? Street kids who don't know how to speak. Kind of doctor, what what's he going to do? He's pretending, he's acting dumb, or oh, he has an agenda. And that kind of scares me. I'm considering CIA and all those informants. Why do y'all make me an appointment at eight o'clock in the morning, and at ten thirty you're finally calling me into the office? Yeah, I realize the office is busy, 
you're overstaffed. I mean, understaffed and overstocked with cancer patients. But why? Why don't you have me upstairs on the lounge waiting for you to call me downstairs rather than call me downstairs for a specific time to see him get out of the lounge chair to hear my blood work only to have been left there till 1030 in the morning. And then to hear the, the words come out of his mouth and he says, okay, give me an update. I said, what the hell are you talking about? You give me an update. Where's my update? Am I neutropenia? No, no, no. But then he didn't go into the thrombocytopenia. He already knew it was there. I already knew I am, so then he wants to listen. Dismissing this, and I said, well, my idea is that when they gave me the COVID test, they bruised my sinuses, and now that since I bruise easy, I probably was discharging. That's just not so moist in there. What? That's not why. I said, well, certainly they should not have stuffed that thing up my nose as an oncology patient in an ER and ultra saline me. So they failed all the way around. Whatever the cause, I have it under control. And I feel very comfortable that my body's doing what it's doing. So then he's like a pass. Oh, oh, what do we do now? So finally he inserts that thrombocytopenia and the first thing I thought was infusion. Well, there's platelets, why don't I take platelets? He won't answer the question. I have to come home and realize that the chemo is going to attack the platelets because that's part of the symptoms. So I can understand why you wouldn't give it to the patient because why would you spend the chemo's power on something that's going to just get destroyed that should have helped when we can destroy that which should not help, is not helping, cancer. Dang. Do I need another oncologist? If there isn't one that can be trusted, they're all like 80 years old in there, and he's the young buff come in, who's willing to do the workload of hematology, not oncology. You see the shaky old 80-year-old man, he's a cancer doctor. Oh, my God. And you know, in Peru, when the plane went straight down, there were eight oncologist specialists, the top specialists of the world going to the symposium. Now, they weren't the, all of them because there was, there's lots of them and some came by other means and some even skipped that flight. So many were saved to make it to the symposium. It reminds me of the microbiologist they got rid of before they introduced this whole mRNA scheme through Fauci. That they literally killed microbiologists. I mean, the accidents are beyond coincidental and the synchronicity is so in your face that it can't be conspiratorial. And that took place in the early, you know, 2000 to 2004, somewhere a little bit earlier, but they made sure they strategically took out these microbiologists and some were in pairs, you know and destroy them pairs right in front of our faces through the Marxist agenda. And these people are still in power now. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to not get caught and find that firing time for which they might be blindfolded or blindsided quiet through the day, all month. Yeah, that's November. <laughs> we can always listen back, you know. Now, December is the 12th, which is a pinnacle. It's like the clock, noon to midnight, the midnight hour, that sort of thing. Um, but it's the 12th as it is a three. So it has to do with um, investment within, that's hidden within. It's the artist number. It's uh, the old and broken, the discarded. That which then comes out as an investment 
to be revealed because it's a pinnacle. So you change something from one thing to another through art because you saw it hidden within. And as an investment, it's within. So it's inside, but it's not like an internal because it wants to come out as a gift and it's creativity and beauty. So we take that beauty <laughs> and place it on time. So everything I just said, the investment upon the time, whether it be the artist upon the time, the, your creativity upon the time, it's, um, it's a creative time. It's going to be a rejuvenating time. It's a time when uh, you bring out the old, the discarded, the broken, and it's not about the new. No, it's about, I don't say brand new, but it's, there's nothing new under the sun. But what it is, is it, it brings forth something that wasn't into something that it, it could be, potentiality. So the three represents potential as well as beauty and creativity. So the potential time, which is three upon, it's the fire. The potential time is the center stage. The potential time, everything that has potential, is to be at that top level. Center stage, spotlight, anything under a spotlight. Um, so the potential time upon that comes through the day. And so those tapes and those revealings and those standings and all those, well, and then plus we have the electoral, it's all going to reveal itself. And it has to in complete, it's not, it's not, nine is the completion number, 10 is the end, eight is the um, power and control to cleanse yourself of that which binds you, like that pair of handcuffs, because it's still that too, as well as time, looped, infinity, as it grasps you from one side to the other. Yeah. So the potential, potential time, it's not even a potential then. We're going to bring out the old and the broken and the ugly. And recyclers do that. It's a recycle number. So it's the final recyclement of that eight that we're going to face in December. And, you know, it's just like my treatment plan. It's only authorized till the 24th of December. And now we're skipping a, a week. I guess he thinks he can fit it in. So I see him in a week. We're going to see if my natural body can produce platelets. And of course, we pass the 21 days from the treatment, which I believe we fucked up. We have to, we split the compound apart. And I think he knows that I'm telling the truth, but they're all acting dumb. They don't get in trouble. It's kind of like, oops. How come the patient was, but we don't know. So hold back. Let him heal from what he's doing. His white blood count naturally healed. And, uh, well, not, yeah, naturally. But I did take immunotherapy last time. So that would have been part of that. To lift me in my immunity. To help my body produce. That's what it's all for. Um, hemo it was all on the hemoglobin balloon level um blood work so yeah cover it up babies cover it up all you want but you better make my requests you better make my requests for a beta blocker so i can sleep and i can rest and i can heal a patient who does not sleep does not heal i said that to the pharmacist and she said absolutely i said a nervous patient needs to be knocked out with a trank right in a psych ward, what would happen? They'd go manic. I said, I can hallucinate. I have done that. And I've gone manic. I've had the same expressions that Jonathan Kleck has had. And that's why I know about them. I'm a lucid dreamer throughout my life. I know what it's like to dream and dream and dream and never get any sleep. And then to discover that marijuana as a young man kills the dream, but not the dreamer. Oh my God, what a gift. So I never got to keep my dreams. I never got to fill my life 
because I was a marijuana smoker. Now I've saved my life for this moment. I have my life. It's an important life. I'm the son of perdition. I'm Ben Yosef. I'm anointed by Gabriel. You can't be anything else but what I am. And take away all my things, my garden and everything, my identity. And it's my placement. It's my birthright. My body is the temple. And it's time. This time. The books were sealed for this time. Not for Paul. No. God bless y'all.